Hey. Hi. All right. Well, people are logging in. Um, I'll just start with introductions. So hi, everyone. My name's Olivia Amaya Ortiz, and I'm an educator at the School for Advanced Research at Indian Arts Research Center. And thanks for logging in. Um, we're doing another installment of our Artist Live series. Oh, I see a little one. <laughs> um, where we basically go behind the scenes and into the workspaces of some art, talented artists. And this program is partially funded by the City of Santa Fe and Arts and Culture Department and the 1% Lodgers Tax. Um, this season of Artists Live, we're going to be further exploring the Grounded in Clay exhibition, um, which was uh, curated by the Pueblo Pottery Collective. Um, and that is a group of over 60 individual members of 21 tribal communities who selected and wrote about pieces from two significant Pueblo pottery collections, one of them being here at the IRC and the other um, at the Vilcek Foundation in New York. Um, so today we're sitting down with Rose Simpson, who's an artist, public speaker, and also a mother from Santa Clara Pueblo. And Simpson's work explore, explores post-modernity and post-colonialism. Her mediums are um, very diverse and have included ceramic sculpture, metals, fashion, performance, music, um, installation, writing, and even custom cars. Uh, before we get going, just want to remind you folks, looks like you're already doing it though. Feel free to use the comment box, use heart emojis, send all the love and questions, comments. We, we appreciate that. Anything that resonates with you, just let us know. Um, we welcome all the feedback and conversation. So um, with that, Rose, hi, it's good to see you. Would you like to introduce yourself in your own words? Hi. <laughs> um, I'm happy that I figured out how not to be crooked on the screen. That was really funny. That was kind I kind of, of liked it. I kind of liked it the other way, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep people on their toes. <laughs> I know how it really feels, so maybe I'll just keep it like that. <laughs> I, I should just tip it this way, and we should just be, we should try and be on the same page. <laughs> um, I can flip mine too to make this a performance project. That's fine. We can be all <laughs> Um, I am Rose, like you said, and I'm from Santa Clara, and I am, um, you know, like you said, multimedia artists. I've been, these last few days, I've been, let's see, what's new in my life? I've been really trying to get in the studio to work in clay, but I get really stuck with um, emails and technology and um, businessy stuff, like um, meetings, etc. And so when I get to sneak and make some stuff out of clay, I get super excited. Cause it's at this time in my life it's almost like a treat um to be in the studio and also um i'm having to switch gears for some cool projects and and i'm also very intimidated by switching gears which is pretty fun to feel because i'm having to um adjust um you know, it's like it's like uh, like turning the chapter and starting a fresh. Like when you have a nice big fresh piece of paper and you have to like make the first mark. And I'm really um, procrastinating doing that. So oh, that's kind of what I'm. Sounds like I'm, it can okay. be intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, super yeah. intimidating and feeling like any mark I make is gonna have a big impact. And so I'm I'm feeling really lots of pressure around it. So that's what's going on. <laughs> well, when you when you're in the studio, do you let your little one join? Yeah, studio? she's around. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> yeah, she's around all the time. Um, one of our buddies just gave her a big old box of hand-me-down clothes, and that was like super super exciting for a five-year-old. And they are everywhere, so it it <laughs> turned into this explosion of hand-me-down clothes, which are really cool. Um, and it's really exciting what she is. So currently getting really into that so now we have to figure out how to clean them up and sort through them and be respectful so you know it's always a balance which is pretty cool yeah cool well um i guess we should talk about the exhibition a little bit are we ready to switch gear <laughs> switch yeah. Gears <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah um 
So in the exhibition, um, for folks who maybe haven't seen seen it at Mayak yet or the catalog, you um, curated two pieces. And um, one of them is a is an ancestral Puebloan jar um, from 1050 to 1300. And uh, when I was reading the entry, I I was um, intrigued by how you started started speaking about it because you wrote it as a letter um, addressed to you know dear capitalism, dear patriarchy, dear modern existence, dear Rose. And so that might be a good jumping off point. Can you tell us why you, um, why do you feel it's important to address these subjects? And then where do you see yourself, you know, within or your role within those systems? Um, one of the coolest things about curating or, or being a part of this project was sitting with those, with those pieces and having the privilege of know, being near them, being with them in silence, building a relationship with them, um, building a conversation with those pieces, really sitting with them. Um, and also, I think um, it was really cool to feel like uh, that the collection is a resource and that we can, you know, it was almost like the doors are open, come visit your ancestors, you know. Um, and that was really, really cool. Um, and then the, the aspect of writing about it writing about that experience of building that relationship um, was was really um, intimidating <laughs> but also really um, enlightening you know and oftentimes I think about um, when I see some of those older works from ancestral places I think about um, that picture that's the aesthetic right yeah that's that's it gosh it's beautiful so 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 beautiful to me Oh. Um, it reminds me of my values, right? Like, so what, what is, what is uh, abundance and what is success and where are we going and what does that look like? And some of the aesthetic of those old pieces are like absolute perfection. And they show me basically where I want to go, but it's like, it's like history, it's the past, but it, it, it looks to me like the future. Um, and so... I have to be careful about comparing um, my life now with, with what I believe were the values of the past. And so when I, when I address that piece, you know, dear capitalism, dear patriarchy, um, you know, dear Rose, I am part of that. I am part of that story. I am actively perpetuating those things. Um, and it's not that, you know, it's speaking to me in the parts of myself that I am, uh, I am, mm, you know, I'm not on one side or the other. I'm not the good guy. I'm not the bad guy. We're all playing this game and we can all learn from that kind of um, reflection or aesthetic. And so that's why it's addressed to myself as well as those things, because I don't see myself as separate as long as I'm playing this game. I'm part of it as well. So it's teaching me as much as I as mm -hmm. I. Um, you know, it's a reflection of myself and I can listen to myself in that. Yeah, I think that's really insightful. I think it's easy to lean into binaries um, when we think of ourselves and our um, communities. And, you know, you, in your work, you speak a lot about genetic memory of, of the clay itself. And maybe can you tell folks a little bit about, like, how you think about clay carrying genetic memory in general and how do you choose to work with it as an artist or like how you are thinking about it when you approach it? I think often about how um, I was raised to believe that what we call inanimate things have consciousness, right? So rocks and plants and even the chair and the pillow or like everything around you is listening and it's and it's aware right so we we're in 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 our deep relationship with all things and there's accountability constantly um and so how do you act if you're always being watched <laughs> but also how how you know we're so deeply internally critical but also how um because we know we're always watched that we can remember that we are deeply forgiven because you know everyone's being watched 
disappear for a minute? <laughs> Did I uh, for me, you cut out for just a second, but <laughs> I yeah, you froze okay. for a second, but right, I'm, I'm back. You know. So um, the clay, I really believe that it's um, it's an interesting thing as artists where we take materials from turn them into something that has. Um, intention and consciousness so clay um, really reads that intention right and it's also you know um, a very direct relationship to place and um, our our uh, foundation our foundational it's a foundational element in a really deep way in a real deep way and so I think it listens to us as as all inanimate objects do and so our intention is imbued in it so if you think about ancestral pottery, um, it is still speaking to us, and we are still. Um, uh oh, did I I break out? <laughs> what did you? Yeah, someone said, "Oh no, you're breaking in and out. You're you're breaking in a little bit in and out for me, but I can still hear you." I kind of have resi internet. <laughs> we'll make it work. If not, oh. that's okay. Don't think so. Oh, talk really slow. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll, I can't start, I have to go, <laughs> start breaking. Yeah. Up. I'm on to you, Rose. <laughs> You're on to me. Um, so I think that uh, what I'm basically trying to say, I'll try and sum it up, Cliff's Notes version, um, that the clay has memory and intention from the ancestors that's embedded into that material and was already part of place. So it's a collaboration between place and creator as an artist. And also, if you think they're all connected, it's almost a, a poetic relationship that artist was used by creator to create, uh, you know, this object that goes, uh, <clears throat> goes down into the, into, lives on into the future as, uh, as the byproduct of a, a long-standing relationship, you know, it's like it's a beautiful thing. It's all I don't know what came first, right? The the people or the clay or the pottery or was it all divinely synchronous? Yeah, um, I think in one of your entries, you you say um, I, I mean I have the quote. I'll just read it. So you say. There is a tickle to it. What we thought was doom is birth, and we may not know it yet. Hang on. This is either awakening or apocalypse, depending. Um, can you unpack that a little bit, or uh, specifically post-apocalyptic theory? <laughs> oh, yeah. I know you think about that a lot within your work. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm so excited about, um, you know, the endings that create beginnings, right? And I know um, that abstract designs like abstract geometric designs and so much for um you know i think cultures around the world use abstract geometric designs to um, symbolize uh our spiritual relationships with place um but with like that deep black and white abstraction i really feel like um you know, we, we're reminded of balance of where, you know, in, in that piece itself, I was like, what is foreground? What is background? What is receding? And what is, where where do we follow? What is the wall? Um, and it's like back to full circle, back to that binary um, that you're talking about. Like we're walking in both simultaneously. Um, and, if, and if we remember um, that, every time you can step into the other one and you create a whole new world and we're in it, right? Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it gets me really excited. And I think you're getting really cerebral. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're keeping up with you. <laughs> we are. I'm on you. <laughs> you, had, had to, you had that coffee before we logged yeah, on. Yeah, I'm at a little sugar. <laughs> Some bubbles. <laughs> No, we're keeping up. 
I like I think, what Joaquin just wrote. I love the move to balance and not necessarily duality. And I think that's beautiful. Feel free to keep commenting, guys, or asking <laughs> questions. I was trying not to crack up when someone was making fun of the resi internet. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny. I, I do think it's about... Um, I also think about allowing and witnessing more than controlling. So it's something that I'm trying to learn uh, is, is releasing the need to know and be in control of something or, uh, you know, the anxiety of needing to, to have, uh, knowing everything around it. Like the, I need to know the truth. I need to know, uh, the facts. I need to have, uh, you know, proof for these things. And I'm, I've been let, trying to let myself sort of fall back into allowance to, um, I, I heard the word wonder the other day. And I was like, as long as I'm nervous about needing to be the right one or needing to um, be in control of some sort of narrative, I'm losing the potential wonder that's there. Um, and I think um, that pot that you showed. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull it up. Yeah, can we look at it again and again and again and again? <laughs> It's um, uh, talk about faith. Like to me, that is so powerful, and in, in its um expression and its abstraction and it's like its journey. It's so brilliant. It's brilliant in its journey. Um, I'm looking inside myself to have the faith in my creative process to pull something like that off. You know. I have so much like awe. Yeah, are you referencing like for your own practice? Do you do you mean just achieving that kind of harmony and and balance? Because typically your works are figurative, and the techniques you use, you know, you intentionally make things like really rough and and raw, and you you see the fingerprints and you see metal and. Like... Yeah, I mean, I think what what I'm working towards in my own work is faith in the process and and forgiveness to the process and also um compassion for our for my own very complicated existence right that's not simple or slick or clean or you know easy um it's, it's beautifully complicated and it's and it's rough and it's and it's handmade and it still is making itself and in that, um, you know, I don't think I'm completely there yet. I, I, I still feel like I'm worried about um, it being accepted and doing the right thing. Like I just started this conversation with my fear about approaching this new project, you know, um, mm -hmm. and that pot could teach me to have to allow the wonder of its becoming to flow through me. And I'm forgetting that. Right. And, the, and when I forget that, that's when the fear comes in and I start getting anxious and nervous and I start being self-critical and all those wonderful things, the patterns that we've inherited and internalized. So I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Like when I see that, that's where I want to get trust or that or, or the like the skill, the skill isn't just. Um, practice and practice of making something it's actually um, the investment in entering into another state of consciousness in a sense where you're allowing something to become and that's what I see in that and I'm in awe yeah it's a beautiful piece when <laughs> you talk about <laughs> oh is that a little laugh in the background <laughs> it's, it's her tea is funny <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, when you talk about consciousness, um, can you can you try to tie that into your past experiences? I know you talk about when you were visiting Japan and and the aesthetic traditions within that culture and kind of how you learned um, 
about the focus on process versus product and like how do you think that translates to Pueblo pottery and what we're looking at in the exhibition? I, I think that um, I would talk about the next piece that I chose, which was a, a much older piece yeah. from Santa Clara. Yeah. And I think that um, looking at the work and revisiting the older work, we, I think I've, I'm finding compassion around the process of, of culture. Hello. I think you're breaking up a little bit again. Yeah, it was a little chunky. So I, you, you kind of sounded like an Android for me. <laughs> but what I was kind of saying was that um, I think, um, you know, and 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 I would I don't want to. Uh, be too specific about this or culturally appropriative but in, um, but <laughs> Japanese uh, aesthetic is uh, wabi-sabi I don't know if you've heard of that but this allowance of something's um, becoming like a crack that might have happened is highlighted with gold to um, to honor its life and it's the aesthetic that it's creating itself to be in a sense um, and when I saw that the pot that was um, crumbled around the lip, um, yeah. I saw this absolutely beautiful representation of, you know, who we are as people and that there's something absolutely beautiful about where we are in the world and how we are surviving and we are, might be crumbled at the lip here and there, but we're absolutely beautiful. And that in a sense, you can love the experience of this identity um, as much as you might see beauty in that um, pot, right? Um, and so I think that that's how it could be um, connected. It's more, it's more um, around our human existence and post-colonial stress disorder um, experience, you know, as as people who are, who are holding each of our own facets of this very diverse identity of indigenous people in this time. Thank you. I guess one of the last more serious questions I, <laughs> I've been asking <laughs> yeah. is um, thinking about the exhibition themes that we have uh, or that the Pueblo Pottery Collective has identified. And one of them is um, that of ancestors. And so the question I would pose is for you as a future ancestor and in the spirit of remembering forward, can you tell us what these two pottery pieces might say about our contemporary moment one day in the future? You really want to know what I think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm being for real right now. You're being for real. For real, for real. <laughs> they would remember when it all had to break to start fresh. Do you remember when we had to remember past the objectification of identity and deep down into the faith of relationship with, with our strength and our supernatural power as indigenous people to survive the thing that, that came the beautiful blessing of destruction that took away something that was hurting everyone so that we could start fresh and that a new world was born. And in this new world, the people remembered why they were here and their lives were so full and rich more than anything that they thought riches even meant in the last world that they were so absolutely full and when they came to meet these pots the pots told them of a story about when we were learning to forgive ourselves and when we were learning to let go and that when we learned to let go 
it didn't have to be ripped from our hands, that we could just set it down, we could do this gracefully rather than with a fight. <laughs> and so those pots spoke of the beauty of this time and how important it was um, for the world to be the beautiful thing that it became. Thank you. It's beautifully <laughs> stated. And a lot of comments saying, tell the truth, Rose, for real, heart emojis. Yeah, just lots of love and appreciation there in the chat box. Um, crazy as it is, it's already been 26-ish minutes. So we're almost ready to round it out unless anyone has some last minute questions or or comments. Um, for folks who haven't seen the exhibition yet, we encourage you to do so. It's on view at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And beyond that, thank you so much, Rose, for signing in. I agree. Someone said, Rose, your mind is amazing. Thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us for a little bit. It's been an honor. Thank you for having me. And, and the being a part of this exhibition, it's been a really nice change of pace from the rest of my life. And I'm really grateful to have been included. It really was special. And, um, and I'm, I'm honored to have been a part of that. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Before we go, um, any other like you mentioned some projects. I don't know if you can really speak about them yet, but anything we can, we should be looking out for? Right now, um, I've been in Philadelphia working at the Fabric Workshop and Museum. I'm putting together this epic installation in their museum um, that opens October 6th. And I'm really, really excited about it. It's like, it's so cool. It's the most amazing opportunity. And I think it's gonna transform it's, it's transforming me, so I hope it'll transform more than that um, and be something in the world that it's like, it's almost like an artist statement that's laid out onto an entire floor of a museum. And it's like these rooms and buildings that, that you can navigate and, and look into or, or enter. Um, it's called Dream House. And then I have a solo show in New York City in March. Um, and then I have a solo show in San Francisco in September. <laughs> and I also have some other big projects going on. So I'm very busy, but I'm really, I'm feeling really full and blessed to be doing this. So it's good. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear more about those exhibitions opening. So. I'll try and post more. I got locked out of Instagram on my phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you didn't that. get locked out tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all like, no, I have to go on my computer, which is actually really good because I only get to check like once a day or once every other day. So I'll try and post pictures and keep everybody updated. But I'm trying to be more healthy and stay off Instagram as much as yeah, I can. Yeah, if you don't, we don't blame you. <laughs> right on. Right on. That's where I am. If you're wondering where I went. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thanks everyone for joining and we'll be back in about two weeks um, with another SAR Artist Live focusing on Grounded and Clay. All Yay. right. Bye folks. <laughs>